Now, Pavarotti was a good friend. Hello, and welcome to The Revealing. I'm your host, Pavarotti, here to discuss the Idaho 4 case. As a disclaimer, this channel is for entertainment purposes. These are my opinions. I'm not here to slander. Let's get started. Today, I'm going to bring you several videos. Now, a couple of them, I'm going to go ahead and focus in on some efforts from another content creator, a freedom-loving hater named Brent Kopeka Burger. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it in honor of our 45th president of the United States, Mr. Donald Trump, who they tried to take out yesterday with their American-hating selves for this new fascist society that they're trying to put together for people like Brent Kopakaburger. And the reason I'm saying that is, number one, watch several of his videos lately. Of course, he wants to bring me up in every one of them. And in one video... He had the audacity to bring up the statement on the wall behind me and call me QAnon. Okay? Now, you'll notice the little flag on my wall. Really like that. And it says, as he quite not eloquently pointed out, that when people, peep, when people, when people, when people fear the government, it's tyranny. When government fear the people, it's freedom. He pointed that out and went on to explain how that was a communist statement and, uh, and explained a bunch of other idiocracy. And he failed to mention who that quote is by. See, that quote is by Thomas Jefferson, one of the founding fathers of the United States of America. So, if the founding fathers of the United States of America... If you cannot point to the words that they say to express what America is supposed to be about, then who can you point to? Huh? Who can you point to? Brent Kopak, a burger. Um, I believe you, you went into some things about Marxist and Marxism, which I would absolutely expect someone like you to do. So it's people like that that have no idea what America's about and no idea what freedom's about. So, and that's all I'm going to say on that because they didn't take Trump out. That dude is strong. That is my guy. He stood up, got shot in his ear, pointed his fist in the air and said, fight. That's what we need. That is a leader. And that's all I'm going to say about that. What I want to focus in on is the idiocracy of Brent Kopakaburger because he's a smart guy. He's smart in some senses. But... He's so obtuse and he has such blinders on that he can't even see when he points out something that should be examined further. Well, let's go ahead and examine further the things that this guy pointed out and glossed over. Not only glossed over, but glossed over it and said, well, Jay Embry would really uh, focus in on this part. And then he went silent for a minute, and then he glossed over it, and he continued on with his rant about things that have no importance whatsoever. So, thank you, Brent Kopakaburger, for pointing this out, because I think it's an excellent topic to discuss. And he brought up a New York Times article about the investigation back in 2023, I think it was around June. And in that article, it discussed several things. One of the things it discussed was possible leads that law enforcement explored during the investigation into the Idaho four crimes. And so that one particular segment, I think, is one that is pertinent, and we're going to explore it further. Thank you, Brent Kopakaburger. I'm going to enjoy, really, my technical video that will be out a little later on. I'm titling Suspect Vehicle 36. Maybe I'll do Suspect Vehicle 13, Suspect Vehicle AB. I don't know. But I'm going to show the idiocracy in all of your all of your pertinent exculpatory evidence that you keep claiming are exculpatory as you listen to things. And I'm going to show you what's actually pertinent 
in the videos surrounding the King Roadhouse and why you're misleading people, Fed. Okay, so let's get started. All right. So here's the article. Or this is the excerpt from the article. And you'll see right here it says, Through the first two weeks of December, investigators put some of their focus on classmates of the victims. Well, that would be smart. You know, you go and you investigate the people that's, uh, you know, that they know, right? Because that's usually who commits a crime is they know the person who did it. So first couple of weeks, they focused on the classmates. They also widened the search to examine a man in another state who had been known to send harassing messages to women, but had visited Idaho only twice in his life. Well, I can understand them expanding the search to a gentleman like this. I mean, he's obviously some type of freako that likes to send harassing messages to women. So that would be somebody that would harm women. Let's look at them. Makes sense. Um, then you'll see it says they looked at a woman who previously charged with assaults in the region. Okay, well, this woman has a history of being charged with assaults in the area. So yeah, they, assaults on women. She's, she's somebody that's done it in the past. Let's go look at her. Makes sense. They once looked, or they looked at a man once accused of wielding a knife. Well, these crimes were committed by somebody with a knife. So yeah, let's go look at a man who was who was once accused while he was wielding a knife. Makes sense. They looked at sex offenders. Absolutely, if they think this may have been a serial unaliving, then well, of course they're going to go look at sex offenders. And then they looked at a white supremacist. Now, this is what the genius Bro Packerberger just, just laughed off. But let me ask you a question. It says they looked at a white supremacist. What in the world, because this is the one statement in this entire paragraph that makes no sense whatsoever if you look at it on its own. Why would they look at a white supremacist? Were any of the victims in this house not the whitest of white kids you've ever seen in your life? Excuse me, young adults. So why would a white supremacist even come up on the radar? That's like saying they looked at the local baker. You know what I'm saying? White supremacist. When, when has a white supremacist ever gone in and unalived college students that were of his own race for any reason whatsoever? There is absolutely nothing that would make somebody look at somebody for this crime because they're a white supremacist. But let me tell you, that is the most important statement in this entire paragraph. And it's just verifying what they were doing. There's only one reason to look at a white supremacist, okay? Because the only white supremacist around there was somebody that was heavily involved in the drug operations. They looked at the white supremacist because he was obviously the first one that I looked at because of the other events surrounding this crime and the people that are involved in it and their families. See, that white supremacist, they looked at him because they know that he was set up by the mothers in the crime. So let's take a look at this white supremacist and why would he have been a suspect? Here he is. His name is T.F. T.F. lived a mile and a half from the house. Well, there's proximity. Yeah, we'll take a look at him. Now, was T.F. incarcerated at the time? No. He was absconded from his furlough that the court released him on. So he was a fugitive at large. So, well, okay, we got a fugitive at large in the Moscow area that lives within the Moscow area, and he's a white supremacist. Huh. Oh, yes, he's a fugitive at large because he was arrested on major drug trafficking charges. Over a pound of METH and over 30 fit pills. So, that is a major player, not just a, a little possession guy or a little possession with intent to deliver guy. No, this is a drug trafficker with ties to the Aryan Nation in town, absconded during the time of the trial. Yeah, I would say he's a, a pretty, uh, you know, pretty strong suspect that you'd want to look at at this point. 
Oh, and then there's the fact that it's quite possible that due to the drug task force operations that the mother and the stepmother of two of the victims in the case may have set this guy up for his initial arrest. Okay, yeah, I would say that he is somebody that we need to take a strong look at. And you can bet you folks, they did. They looked at him strong. They went out and they found him on November 23rd in Spokane. Who found him? Was it the Latal guys? No, it was the feds. And that's why when you get into Steve G's texts, everything starts to fall into place. And Brick Kopakaburger, if he had any investigative ability or any intuition, then he would know this. Look at Steve G's text. What does it say? Oh, this one told the FBI and is under their protection, hence why the FBI warned me not to pursue the lead I found. Okay, why would the FBI put him under protection? I mean, they don't put everybody else under protection just because they have some knowledge in the case, do they? It doesn't ever say the roommates in the case are under the protection of the FBI. No, just this informant. Well, they're under protection in the FBI because if you call this one out, he's going to be in danger from the upper ends of the Aryan Knights, the Aryan Circle. He's in real danger for talking. Now, I'm not saying that the words that he's given them about the atrocity is true. You see, he's talking, but all he's doing is talking about who they set up for the crime. It's a perfect scenario for him. Then we've got, I can't say anything or they'll come after me is literally what they told me. So he can't say anything about this white supremacist, about this informant, or the FBI will come after him. This is the father of one of the victims in the case. That's what they told me. They'll come after me. They're serious. And then my favorite, they wrote Gray, right, informing us that this informant Use some protected tip line, some protected tip line, not the protected tip line, not the tip line, but some protected tip line. Yeah, though, no, he didn't use some protected tip line. They went out and they got him, put him in interrogation, and then they got the information from him. And that's why he says there is so much more to this story than is in the media, hence the real reason for the gag order. Hence the real reason for the gag order. You see, Steve G knows what the investigation was really about. Unfortunately, he just doesn't know the other details about this investigation that led up to them planting the evidence to try to get Brick Kopeka to be the assailant. And it turned out it actually pointed to Brian Koberger in the end, unintentionally, I believe, by the perpetrators. But... Law enforcement, FBI, they truly believe that they've got the right people and they followed the right steps in this case because they listened to their white supremacist informant who set it all up to begin with. So, so when you start looking at this thing from the right perspective, then the true evidence that will pop up right in your face will not be something that you overlook and dismiss. So when you look at it from the wrong perspective, like somebody like Brent Kopakaburger, he's really believing that exculpatory evidence for the defendant has anything to do with anything caught on the Linda Lane footage. The only thing caught on the Linda Lane footage is that last pass of the Hyundai Elantra where it turned in and did the three-point turn. They're actually using that as part of their... Hyundai Elantra scenario, but that is not the camera that they identified the vehicle from. And it wasn't the 1122, excuse me, the 1112 camera on Keem Road that they identified the vehicle from either. So both of those cameras are immaterial as far as exculpatory evidence is concerned. And I'm going to prove that to you in the next video. But when you look at it from the right perspective, then when things like you wanted to gloss over pops out right in your face that is pertinent to the case. You gloss over it and want to take a shot at me for it. Well, thanks for doing that because I'm glad you pointed it out because that was the only thing important in anything that you read in that entire video, guy. And I'm going to, I've done a video, I've done, I've done a video. 
I, I produced a video last yesterday and I released it for members only because I couldn't release it just wide open to YouTube because I would have got con tent strikes or whatever they're called because I used part of a documentary on Vice to make my point. So I'm having to trim that down and I will put it out here in just a little bit for everybody to view once I trim it down and they take the copyright stuff off of me. Uh, but it, it relates to the AB connection in this case and I think it makes a very compelling point to everything that I've said. But please like and subscribe to the channel, post your thoughts, post your criticisms, Everybody say a prayer for that 45th president of the United States who's strong. And let's get him some more protection out there. You know why? Because they pulled some of his protection from that stupid hearing that they made up charges that they gave him all the felonies for. That allowed them to pull the protection so that they could get a guy that could get on a rooftop and take a shot at him. And that's not America. And I don't know who these fascists are that's trying to run our country like Brent Kopakaburger but we're going to get them in line or else things are really going to hit the fan. Don't shoot my president. Pavarotti out.